Most people stretch too much and you probably do too. Of course, I'm World's Strongest Man. I also have a master's degree in clinical exercise physiology. And this is one of the topics that I think people waste a lot of their time on. One of my big passions is trying to pass on my knowledge to you guys so you can make the most of your time, money, and energy to make sure that you're getting the most from the gym and from your commitment to your exercise routine. One of those things has to be how do we get hurt? How do we avoid injury? And how do we recover when we get injured? So a lot of people go to a lot of social media gurus and a lot of mantra. To be honest, a lot of this I think comes from our parents and our grandparents telling us you need to stretch before exercise or you're going to get injured um, or your mobility is a problem and so you could get injured. And while this is the case to a point, it is only to a point. Now, let me explain. If mobility was the answer to not getting injured, the most injury-free sport we could come up with would probably be gymnastics. So I looked it up here, and gymnastics incidence of injury is 12.3 per 100,000 hours of participation. Excuse me, per 1,000 hours of participation. If we compare that to professional soccer, it is 8.1 injuries per thousand hours of participation. Gymnastics nearly 50% higher. Now that's just one example. We could go through multiple different sports. The point is that gymnastics does not have a lower incidence of injury, even though they have the highest mobility of anyone. This is also a sport in soccer where you have other people. You've got rolled ankles to contend with. And gymnastics is just you, your movements, and the bar. Of course, there's some details around that, but it does prove the point that simply being more mobile does not result in less injury. Why is this? It's often talked about how we have a stability and a mobility continuum, where the more, more mobile you are, the less stable you are, i.e., your shoulder is substantially less stable than your hip. So your shoulder is much more prone to sublax or dislocate than your hip. Rarely do you hear about a dislocated hip in anyone under the age of 95, where shoulder dislocations happen all the time in younger kids. The reason being, if we have more freedom for range of motion, we have more responsibility to own that range of motion and control that with strength and with stability. When it comes to your stretching, and when it comes to your ideas of increasing mobility, the first thing I'll ask anyone, whether it's a coaching client or a client who goes to my kinesiology clinic, the question is why? Why would you like to be more mobile? Is there a reason, if you can go up here, is there a reason you wanna be able to get way back behind your head? Is there a reason you wanna do the splits? Is there a reason you wanna be able to kick above your head? And most of the time, there's no reason at all. The other portion of the time is the same thing that I say about strongmen, where we're not chasing health, we're chasing a performance outcome. And you might want to kick high because your karate wants you to, or you might want to do the splits because you're dancing, which is fine. But we can't conflate stretching and mobility with a decreased risk of injury. This is chasing a performance outcome, not a health outcome. How do we actually determine that? How do we, how do we include mobility or should we include it at all? And personally, I just don't include it in my routine on a regular basis at all. At least not in the sense that you think I do. I don't sit with a band and stretch and prepare and mobilize. But I do do multiple sets at lighter working weights than I traditionally would. If I go in and I'm doing a squat day, I'll start with the bar. I'll start with 60 kilos. Then I'll go to 100 kilos, 140, all of that to build up to... 350 kilo squat. So by the time I've got to my 350 kilo squat, I've actually gone down and stretched under load for 10, 15, 20 reps of moderate intensity before I go to my high intensity. The only caveat to you really don't need to stretch is if you have a situation where you can't get the range that you need to to perform a movement. The best example in squats is if you don't have the hip mobility to squat well, you're gonna get halfway down or three quarters of the way down, your hips will run into room in your pelvis, you're gonna get early butt wink or anterior pelvic tilt because your, your, your femur can't move in your pelvis anymore, you're gonna get that rocking of your hips and you're gonna have a predisposition to have either a hip or a low back injury. If this is the case, then we need to go to some hip mobility, some ankle mobility, and see where's your actual restriction that's stopping you from squatting properly. This gets us to the fundamental movement patterns of life. And I think whether you're an athlete or not, this is what you should strive to do. If you can push, pull, push overhead, you can carry, you can squat, and you can hinge. 
all pain-free, to full range of motion, there's no obligation for you to stretch. And the other downfall to stretching is if you do stretch, it's only gonna last for about 30 to 45 minutes before you've lost the benefit. You, you need to reinforce that with something or else you're gonna end up like a professional ballerina who does stretch every 30 to 45 minutes all day to make sure they have smooth flexibility all the way up through their full range of motion. By the way, dancers are a whole nother category of people highly mobile and regularly injured, but that's a separate conversation. So if you can't do all the requisite movements of life, the fundamental movement patterns of life, how do we get you to that place? A part of that comes with your loaded stretching. And loaded stretching can be very, very simple. It can be a pullover with a dumbbell. It can be sitting down into a squat and pausing with the weight on your back at the bottom, obviously at a lower intensity than you normally squat, but this is gonna promote lasting change. The way that you maintain this mobility over time is you just never stop doing those things. You never stop practicing these scapular thoracic rhythm required to get you overhead by regularly pressing bars over your head, by regularly pressing dumbbells over your head, by reaching your kids over your head. All of that is gonna retain the range that you need. The most interesting thing about muscles and range of motion is that if you look at a muscle under a microscope before you've stretched it and after you've stretched it, there's no physiological change of the muscle tissue itself. That muscle tissue never actually gets longer. You don't grow muscle longer. But what you do is you change the relationship between your mind and how much tension it thinks the muscle should have. And if you can permanently change that association, that muscle is going to now have a lasting change of neural control and you will feel more relaxed. It's the same principle if you were to use a foam roller. In every tendon, in every muscle, there's something called Golgi tendon organs. And these basically are feedback me mechanisms to the brain to tell the brain how much tension that muscle needs for a given position. And you put a foam roller or a Theragun or some type of massage gun over a muscle, it's messing with the Golgi tendon organs for them to say like, relax. And we have that feedback of relax. And so you feel more loose and ready to go. But unless you don't have the requisite range, that's one of the worst things that you could do before exercise. So that is my two cents. That is the evidence-based two cents. Let me know your thoughts. How much time do you spend stretching? Is this something that maybe I've convinced you? You might be wasting a little bit of your time and you could use more time doing productive things? Or do you think this is a staple in your routine that can't go anywhere? Pop the answer to that in the comments. Thank you very much for watching, guys. As per usual, lift heavy, be kind, and we will catch you soon.